All right, guys, I want to talk about unlocking your potential. Um, the systems we're in at the moment often do not enhance it or encourage it. When I talk about English teaching, and a few people have asked me will I go back to English teaching, I'm actually still looking at that on the side. My wife already teaches English, and if I get anybody come come forward, I, I pass them on to my wife anyway. Denise teaches English, and she's on about doing it online as well. Um, now, between us, that gives us three English teachers that are capable of teaching English. Um, they've managed my, my wife's got as well, she can do Spanish as well. Um, but ultimately, a lot of the stuff I'm interested in doing is actually conversational. I'm not too interested in the way that um, institutionally it's set up. Um, but I do understand the way that a lot of the exams are set up, they're structured. And that's, the, that's what's wrong with society. Is it structured around what somebody somewhere thinks is important or relevant to people they've never met and in industries and stuff that are unconnected to them. The majority of people I know that speak English very well um, is purely from engagement with people on a regular day, a daily basis. It's not from going to a finishing school or whatever. It's because they've had the engagement on a regular day that's brought it out of them. Um, when somebody has to sit and do pot washing, because that's the only job they can get in London, they learn English quite fast because they want to get to a better job. And the only way they're going to get that is being able to speak English. That has, you know, it's that sort of environment where people will be encouraged to learn the language faster. Um, but I don't think them understanding um, grammatical errors or whatever are going to make that much difference to them for the next decade. Um, because they're never actually going to be in an environment where that is relevant. Um, because mostly it's conversational speaking English. As such, that's where they should focus. But a lot of the training courses don't focus on that stuff. It's part of the syllabus, but this is the bizarre thing. A lot of the training courses aren't geared about teaching you how to teach people. It's about this is the sort of subjects that get covered. This is how to review it, not actually how to teach. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the educational system is to blame for a lot of the creativity issues that people have. When you are doing something in school, it is based on the information that they want to feed you. It's not based on logic, it's not based on a broader knowledge or experience. Um, what you have is a syllabus where often they have an answer book, where they can limit their even engagement of the subject that they're actually teaching you. Um, but on top of that, it's not trying to encourage change. So for example, when I was doing um, computer studies, a teacher was trying to tell me that um, a printer was an input device, and I was explaining it's not, it's an input-output device, because it sends data back to tell them the buffer's clear for the next set of data. And this is before inkjets and stuff, where it actually tells you that the ink's half empty and all these other things, and it's like, yeah, but we don't talk to it about that level. But you're wrong. You're wrong. You should actually be explaining that it's an input-out device. The input is the device takes data and will print, but it will also send some data back re relative to the amount of data that's being pushed. Because I remember it. I remember some of the documents I couldn't print before because the printer didn't have enough memory when it, when it used to go onto the old um, plotters and stuff. Um, well, that only becomes an issue when it actually reports it back to the machine that you need another 15 megabyte of memory to be able to plot these graphics. So the information was wrong from the teacher. In the point being, in all of this, is unlock yourself, unlock your own potential. There is stuff I'm sure many of you have overlooked because people have told you it's not for you or you couldn't do this. Even like learning to play the guitar, it's something I'm looking at doing myself um, and I've still got to buy a guitar, but um, and ultimately it's something I'll do for my own enjoyment. But there is other stuff I do do. Uh, yeah, do do. <laughs> Um, like the, the crypto trading, crypto trading is something I taught myself. Programming the servers in the Philippines for the call center, I taught myself. Setting the call center up and developing it, I taught myself with the assistance of other people that actually understood the stuff in the first place. Because um, that's part and parcel of it as well, acknowledging that you do not have all the abilities yourself and the quickest and fastest way of learning a new skill is absorbing from mentors, people that have already done it, people with that experience and knowledge. 
And although people keep sending me messages saying, Matt, can you help me find clients for a call center? The answer will continuously be no on video because I'm no longer responding to those emails because nobody bothers watching the videos except to leave comments about, can I do this for you? The answer to that is no. I mean, there's a, there's a prime example. I've just had a pop-up for big um, blockchain from London School of Economics. Now, a lot of these things are purely for cash these days. But even as a young child, you're encouraged to draw this, do this, do that. It's not about creativity. It's not about draw whatever you like. What is that? Oh, it's a dog. Even though it doesn't look like a dog, it's fine. The whole point is, that's nice. Why has your dog got five ears? Because it has. You know, Who cares? It's not going to make a big difference for you. But it, when people say, well, dogs only have two ears. Does it really matter at that age? The answer is no, because the whole point is kids can do what they want. And that's one of the things I do like my kids doing. I let them do what they want. I mean, I buy, I mean, this week the school holidays are on. I bought a load of clay from the shop up the road. I don't tell them what to make. They just get all the clay and they just make whatever they like. You could say, right, we're going to do a pottery class today and they can make little pots and things. But ultimately, I try to get my kids to do what they want and encourage them to be more proactive in that. Because I do remember when I was a kid, it's very different to kids these days. I mean, I used to spend most of my... I'd be out dusk till dawn. Um, because we would, we would actually just be out playing. And it, we wouldn't need toys. We wouldn't need nothing. We'd just be busy doing stuff with your friends and things. And it just involved hanging out and didn't need anything to be involved. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, I know some of you guys are wanting to go to the Philippines or go or get more independent. A lot of time you've already got the skills. There's a lot of stuff you guys have already got that you don't even recognize yourselves. You don't recognize it in yourselves a lot of time. The, I mean, like people like sports. There is always stuff you can do on the side for team coaching, starting a small, small local team and stuff. A lot of the fundamental things on this that end up getting stopped is because how do I get started? But it, the question is, how do I get it started? Not how do I get it started in the sense that I've given up before I started, but let's get this done. Let's move this forward. It's like we're, we're looking at a business opportunity here in Spain and I'm sitting here wrecking my brains how to raise enough money to buy the place. But at the same time, it's not a case of can't do, won't do or whatever. It's how do I make it happen? And I do think a lot of you guys have that potential, whether it's writing books, whether it's uh, setting up your own websites, whether it's teaching kids football, whether it's teaching your kids martial arts, teaching home mechanics, teaching people skills that they would be interested in doing. Not everything has to be the local college or school. I learned this years ago, years ago. When I was doing, because um, originally I trained in electronics. And I, I learned other skills off other people. Then I started reading about it and expanding it above their knowledge as well. But it started with electronics. And then I was doing carpentry and joinery, completely miles apart. Then doing the electric systems in the middle. Then doing the plumbing. Then doing the, the uh, air conditioning systems. Then HVAC. And then I just keep adding and adding and adding. Because as long as you've got people that can feed you, you can develop your skills. And you will get people say, well, to work here, you need this air conditioning course. You need this one, this one, this one. And then you speak to the air conditioning engineer. He says, I've only got that one. I did that. I haven't finished that yet. I'm still doing the training course. Yet they're working as an air conditioning engineer because there's a shortage. Uh, that's, that's the crazy thing. A lot of this stuff, where they say, we want this, want this. And governments are a prime example of this where they hire people They'll set this low salary and high expectation of what skills somebody has. And yet the job will never be filled. And I've seen these gaps as a surveyor um, because I could see that they want a chart surveyor, but they're offering 24, 26,000 pounds a year. As a contractor, I could earn 75,000 a year doing exactly the same job because the gap, there's a job gap in the sense there's nobody filling that post for six months, which means there is six months of backlog of work plus the time that you've got there. So you, you're going in with loads of work to do. So you work there for six months, earn all the money because you'll do the overtime, take the cash, and then you just leave. And they'll go, 
So I'd like to offer you the job. And I'm like, I ain't interested. Why would I be interested on 24, 26k? I'm going 75, doing the same job. I've got another housing association that wants exactly the same. Now, who taught me to be a surveyor? Well, the answer to that is coming from the maintenance industry. I just added it to everything else. I just keep adding skills on the back of other skills. And you can do that. There isn't anything I can't do around a house. I mean, I could build a house from scratch if I wanted to. But ultimately, I can't be bothered. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. Um, but ultimately, the ability is there. And the ability to do other stuff is there. The, the bit I'm struggling with at the moment, to be honest with you, is ebooks because I'm trying trying to get the structure right because I'm used to flow writing which is a bit like these videos I take a title and I just run with it um, so when I actually have to sit and structure stuff it becomes a bit harder for me but I recognize that is the difficulty I'm having in this it's not that I don't have the information there's I've got all the information but it's structured in a way that is easy to convert into a book but ultimately I'm still writing that ebook and once I've written the first one and fully understand how I've got that right, I'm, I can guarantee I'll write another 10 straight after it, back to back. Because that's the way I am. I'm very, very systematic once I get into something. Once I start flowing with something and it starts working, it's like bang, 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 bang. It just The ideas just keep going. And the point being for you guys out there, you can do exactly the same. You can flow into that. And I know some of you guys think, well, I don't really have this. I don't really have it. There's always opportunity there. Unlock your full potential. Thanks for watching.